Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and in today's lesson we're going to be looking at some more advanced hybrid picking concepts, and this is in celebration of my new book release, Hybrid Picking Guitar Technique. If you enjoy this video, please do head on over to Amazon, grab yourself a copy, it's a great way to support the channel, and you will get lots and lots of cool guitar licks in exchange. So, go and do a good thing, support me, buy my book. Anyway, on to the lesson, let's take a look at it. So, in yesterday's lesson, what we were focusing on was using the pick and fingers to play double stops. So I was picking the uh, the D string and then playing the uh, with my ring and uh, middle fingers playing the G and B strings. <laughs> That sort of thing, picking fingers. What we're gonna be looking at today is building a little bit more dexterity into the proceedings by not using these fingers to play double stops, but instead rolling. So we're gonna use the pick, then the middle finger, and then the ring finger to ascend through the strings. Now, of course, the easiest way to be working on this would be just to take an A major chord and literally to play pick, middle, ring, pick, middle, ring. You could start building up speed on that. But one of the concepts that I talk about in the book is a concept known as Spanish laps. This is what John Petrucci talks about in his Wild Stringdom book. And that's to uh, accelerate by moving between 16th notes and then 16th note triplets. So I'm gonna introduce you to a rhythm and I'm gonna play it around this fifth fret area here, uh, seven, six, and five on the D, G, and B strings. We're gonna play a series of 16th notes and then uh, 16th note triplets at the end. It's gonna sound like this. It's a wonderful exercise. Because you have that accelerating feel at the end, it really helps you to kind of push your speed with this type of thing, which is an essential part of developing speed, is pushing speed. It's a wonderful exercise, and of course you can apply it absolutely anywhere, and if you wanted to, and I, uh, I do in the book, I apply it across string changes, so doing things like... <laughs> like that. Uh, it really is up to you how far you want to take something like that for these ascending rolls. But they're a very, very useful technique uh, that result in some, uh, certainly a lot of um, technical uh, options that you that you would have. I was doing some silly little examples myself in order to uh, work on string crossing mechanics. Let me show you this uh, really kind of, it's quite a tricky and advanced idea, uh, but you'll have a lot of fun with it. So if you take an open E major chord, we could use our ascending roll to play the E, the A, and the D strings. And then after this first note, I'll bring my pick over to the G string. Now if you get this right, you can absolutely start playing a, a series of, of rolls. We could play... I think that's a lot of fun, and if you start working on some, uh, frankly, quite silly ideas, like a, maybe play a rhythm pattern going, um, uh, that's a fun little idea that I came up with just yesterday, actually, as a way of trying to force some of these uh, string crossing mechanics into my own practice. And it seemed like quite a ridiculous way of working on this as an idea. But the beauty of hybrid picking as a technique is the limitations of your own creativity. If you look at someone like Danny Gatton who uses hybrid picking in a much more traditional uh, way 
but to an extreme level. That's very different to how someone like Brett Garced uses hybrid picking. Brett Garced doesn't actually do any sweep picking. When he plays these crazy arpeggio ideas, he is uh, rolling with his with his hybrid picking fingers. And uh, you know, playing those ideas at speed is actually beyond my uh, my capabilities. If you want super advanced stuff like that, you want to check out like the Gustavo Assis Brazil books, which are uh, you know hyper shred technique uh, stuff, re real dexterity stuff. But you know, the limitation on this is absolutely your creativity and what you can. Think think and find to do with things. To close up, I'm going to give you uh, an example taken from the book. This is a, a J.S. Bach uh, piece. It's uh, one of his um, cello preludes, I'm sure, uh, if memory serves me right. And you're, you're probably familiar with the piece. It sounds like this. <laughs> get the idea. Now this is something that I actually use as a way to warm up my hybrid picking technique because we can use the pick and the finger to play the first two notes. So if we're taking a C major chord, we're then going to uh, pick with the pick, use our middle finger to play the E note on the second fret, and then move over with our pick to play an ascending roll, pick middle ring. So you get pick middle, pick middle ring. And then if we repeat that roll, that pattern. Now the entirety of that piece, the entirety of that Bach piece, is just that pattern applied to a different uh, different chords in each bar. And in the book I've got a full transcription of the piece that took quite a while to get together, uh, but it's a great workout on that picking hand because the reality of the situation is sure, you can, you can absolutely alternate pick that. And that's a great workout in its own right, but I actually find it considerably easier to play with the picking fingers. I kind of like the way it sounds as well. Now, if we look at the first four chords that are applied to this, so you can really start using this as a, as a warm-up exercise, we're going to play a C major chord. We're then going to play a D minor chord, but keeping a C in the bass. So that's three, zero, two, three, one. Now, but the picking is exactly the same, so pick middle, pick middle ring, pick middle ring. We then have what I think of this is a G7 over B. So this would be the B, the second fret of the A string, third fret of the B string, and first fret of the high E string. Back to our C major. Now if I play that very slowly for you, that's going to sound like this. on from there. Uh, it's a really nice piece to work on, uh, some wonderful chord voicings in there, and definitely as you start speeding that up, that's a little bit more challenging, it's going to sound like this. And a little bit faster still. So it's a wonderful workout for you uh, to really be applying this stuff anywhere. These forward rolls are a big part of the way that I play a lot of my up-tempo country licks, even just for simple ideas like moving through a chord. You can get some really nice uh, rolls, really smooth sounding rolls with these that are well worth working on. Now I'm not going to delve into the reverse rolls. Go backwards. Uh, I cover those in great detail in the book. Lots of exercises for you to work on. I just wanted to get you started on this as a concept. It's not too difficult, but it's something that will take time to get the dexterity there. Once you have the dexterity in your fingers, you shouldn't find this as too much of a problem to integrate into your own 
playing. Now, hopefully you have enjoyed that. And as always, if you have any questions about this, please do let me know in that comment section below. If you want to support the channel, of course, you know what I'm going to say. The best thing to do is head on over to Amazon and grab yourself a copy of Hybrid Picking Guitar Technique. I'm sure you are going to enjoy it. And if you have any questions about this, guys, please do let me know in that comment section below. I am happy, happy, more than happy to help. Thank you very much for checking this video, and I'll see you for another video soon. Goodbye.